Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we're actually going to be covering a Nadine player, uh, one of the highest ranked Nadine players currently in KR. Today we've got Shuvi with us. How are you doing today, Shuvi? Doing pretty good. Back for yet another one from the looks of it. And it's a pretty interesting character that we haven't seen too, too much towards the end of Season 4. So this is going to be a pretty cool analysis on how she works. Yeah, I mean, I we haven't seen too much of her, uh, especially in NA. But right now, she's actually been seeing a lot more pickup uh, play in general in the high with a pretty good win percentages. There's been a few item changes. I believe Radar getting some more love and potentially a couple other AD items and just really allowed Nadine to sort of highlight some of her skills more recently. I think overall she has always been steady, but that's not exactly great in a game where some characters are just excelling. So uh, I think a lot of indirect changes have definitely affected Nadine in Season 5, and this game will be a good representation of how all those has kind of culminated into where she is today. Exactly. Now, for anyone that's not familiar with Nadine, we'll just go over her kit real quick here. First is her passive Wild. So how this works is Nadine gains a stack of Wild when she's involved in either slaying an animal or a test subject. And this actually stacks up to 200. Now, the main thing that these stacks are actually used for is they, ma depending on how many stacks you have, it'll make your abilities do more damage. So that's the main reason why you want to get this to 200 as soon as possible. Perk. Exactly. One of the coolest things, sorry about that. Yeah. One of the coolest things about this is that you actually do get different numbers of stacks depending on what you also help to kill as well. So there's some reasons why your Nadine might be looking for bears at certain points in the game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, for sure. Each one has a little bit of a different value depending on what you farm there. Next, we have her skill Bullseye. Nadine channels and increases the range and damage of her ability over time. And then when she reactivates the skill, it'll fire an arrow dealing damage. Next is a Squirrel Trap. Nadine throws uh, down her Squirrel Trap at a target location and she can reuse this ability to throw down another trap, which will create a wire between it and any enemy caught in the connected traps are slowed and their attack speed is actually reduced. Next is Monkey Wire. So this main one here is her attack speed steroid. She attaches a wire to a targeted location and while attached, her attack speed is increased and reactivating the skill will actually pull her back to the anchor point. Over there. Next is her ultimate Wolf Assault. So every three basic attacks will summon a wolf and the wolf will deal skill damage to enemies, reducing their attack speed and movement speed. A solid kit overall for Nadine. There's a lot of ways that she can definitely self peel herself, but at the same time, because she is going to be an ADC esque character, you always want to be pumping out auto attacks, as you mentioned, especially with the Wolf Assault. It does pretty much more damage the more auto attacks you throw. So as soon as you proc that, you want to always be using your attack skill. We also heard about the Monkey Wire, how it gives you the attack speed as soon as you place it. I believe you also get a little bit more of an extended duration when you pull yourself to it as well. You always just want to be auto attacking on this character, but at the same time, because you are a backline character, of course, you're going to be very squishy. You also do have the crossbow skill since she is going to be playing this specific variant in this game. The bow version is not really play too much right now. But, yeah, bow is also uh, more of like an amp build. It's more yeah. just trying to do funny big bursts off of your Q more so than auto attacking. Exactly. So right now, the way that she is, she has a lot of self peel. As long as you're able to use things correctly, you should be able to do well. We'll see. You know, of course, this is one of our highest rated in the Dean players, even on the KR side of things. We'll see how she decides to take some of these fights, because characters in this lobby are actually a little bit annoying for the Nadine to deal with. But she's playing super aggressive, even blinking in to secure the kill onto the Abigail. She was so low. The fight was already determined. Lyanne, it's a bit too early for her to do more damage. So there is a the couple of bonus kills coming in. And look at the number of stacks. She already has 148 alongside 54 Anima Reaper stacks. A lot of Nadines really like to pair these together because in the end, you're going to be looking for kills. You're going to be looking for bears. Side by side, the amount of stacks and the amount of damage you can get from both of those things stacking up is quite high. Absolutely. And yeah, for sure. I mean, we can already see that she's getting those high excellings. And one of the things I want to really talk about when it comes to Nadine, especially crossbow, is that Nadine is an ADC, but she is probably in one of the shorter ranges of ADCs in comparison to some other characters that we have 
uh, probably right around the middle of the pack, I'd, I'd probably say. And the utilization of her her monkey wire actually makes her play a lot closer as we kind of saw in that last fight you know utilizing it dashing in trying to get the slow down on the abigail putting a lot of like pressure of the chase uh i'm excited to see how else they play in that position right because they they played aggressive there and it ended up working out but i wonder if they'll keep playing in that aggressive style he was only allowed to really do that because the happy kill was taken so low from the rest of her teammates. But it is nice to know that we do have a Nadine that is playing extremely fearless. That is a typically okay strat to have as a Nadine as long as you're confident. Of course, some of that confidence will kind of get you killed every now and then because you are, as we mentioned, a backline squishy character. But again, this is one of our higher rated Nadines over on the Korean side of things. Maybe that will be a bit more of a confidence booster for her. So far in this game, she's doing really well. Again, 200 stacks now. She's fully built up by that. Day two, not a bad pace. If anything, I would say above average when it comes to efficiency of stacking that up. Now she is capped. So when it comes to the amount of damage that Wolf Assault and Bullseye will gain from when it comes to the stack numbers, it will be at the max. Yeah, and then I think we were actually going to now be going to our radar here. As we farmed enough for a force car, got two meteors. So we already got three items built. And we're on just day two. So this is this is the thing with ADCs. When ADCs can kind of snowball like this, if they end up going to either the Mithril or to a battle zone, it's going to be a really good advantage fight for them. Yeah, it's going to go to a battle zone. And this Nadine is already well stacked. Nice positioning coming through. The Food for Thought isn't really going to do too much from the 11. She did get taunted, but it doesn't really mean too much. But it's still going to continue because this is a battle zone. Nice blink away to deny the taunt as well. And look at how she positions throughout the course of this fight. Now, I don't think it's going to work because the Abigail ended up getting on top of her. Down goes our teammates as well. The battle zone itself, of course, not going in the way of the team for our Nadine, but the positioning is exactly what I want to highlight. Stepping away from the 11 perfectly on time, dodging out on some crucial skills, keeping her distance away from a lion so that her claw doesn't catch her. Abigail also kind of only got an angle on her towards the end of the fight too. That's what we want to see from the Deans. Exactly. And I mean, she pumped out so much damage in that fight. I'm really surprised that even with her power spikes in the way that she played that, getting so much uptime on that damage output that they weren't able to kill anything. The enemy team just didn't take any damage. Mm -hmm. It's the sustain from the 11. A lot of her damage was pumped into her while the calorie cycling was going on. That's the HP regen coming through from the 11. Sometimes you gotta find your target <laughs> as a Nadine. Although, to be fair, the targets on that team specifically are not exactly the ones that Nadine wants to be pumping in damage to all the time because there is so much catch out potential, so much uh, crowd control potential coming in from that team too. Liam with her claws, Abigail with her insta jumps. It's, it's a tough comp to fight without that many items, even though you know, I see that she has three, but yeah. still. <laughs> You can't really do anything if you're dead, even if you have all the transitions in the world. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely, definitely a tough team to fight because, again, she needs to respect the Abigail. She has to be careful of Leanne. She's got a little more wiggle room with her. And then Eleven is also just up in her face right at the beginning of that fight from the TP in. So, I mean, you just got to hit what you can hit and it wasn't enough. Huh? Yeah. She's still moving on throughout the course of the game, though, of course, Anna Marie per stack caps out at 80. She's about to finish that one with the last bear right here. So when it comes to overall stacking, she's done for the rest of the game. What is her weapon mastery actually sitting at? I'm kind of curious about that one. It is at 15. So, yeah, this is one of the things that has been always consistent with Nadine since she always loved to farm animals. Even before they capped the max stacks of the wild in recent times, she always was just constantly farming animals over and over and over again. Not uncommon to see Nadine sitting at, like, Mastery 20 by sometime Day 3. That was a common occurrence back in the days. Even now, I mean, you saw her losing a fight in the battle zone. She's still Weapon Mastery 15. That's really, really good. Yeah, no, it's incredibly good. And actually, it's really funny that you bring it up because of the infinite stacking of, like, Nadine's. One of the things that I used to do is I wasn't a Nadine player. I didn't play Nadine, but I was always in the D Nadine discussions to figure out optimized farm routes yeah because nadine <laughs> players love knowing the every spawn oh, yeah. when they'll spawn how to rotate your farm to make sure you get the best farm possible and i was like yes tell me nadine's how do i farm 
you knew you were talking to an Adim main when they were talking, where they were bringing out respawn timers for animals for their second rotation of animal farming. If that's not what you were seeing in the Dean chat, you were not. You were talking to a fake Nadine yeah. back in the days. But with the amount of stacks now capped at 200, she's a lot more lenient to play on. Of course, when it comes to the overall damage of her Bullseye and Wolf Assault, it's not really going to affect it a lot, especially because you're not running AMP. That was a lot more um, important when the bow version of Nadine, Nadine was a lot more popular. Now I have a friend that's a little bit mad about the fact that bow Nadine is kind of gone, especially with the max stacking, but I will say the crossbow gameplay style is something that I have always really just liked. The explosion shot is so crucial when it comes to the self peel of the Nadine. I'm hoping that we can see one very, very soon. It's already level three because she is at Weapon Mastery 15 plus. Let's see if this fight is gonna be one where she's ever in any danger of having to force the explosion shot use. Yeah, I'm always, I always love the aesthetical appeal of using that, uh, that D skill coming in from the Nadine or from like any crossbow user for sure. And actually we do actually see Cassie sort of putting a lot of pressure on Nadine, but Nadine's just getting as many auto attacks off as possible, instantly blinking to try and dodge the Rozzy damage. But I don't think she's going to be able to put any more pressure. Her teammate's about to flop here, and we actually don't get any kills again. A little unfortunate. That's brutal. That's brutal. She got a really nice early catch out to the Rozzy, but Rozzy is such a mobile character. You saw her proccing the Wolf Assault immediately using the Monkey Wire to aggress onto the Rozzy. Maybe trying to use the Wolf Assault slow, because the first shot is always going to give it to you as soon as you proc it. But Rozzy's movement speed way too fast. She's going to flutter away. She's going to use the moving reload away. One of the most difficult and frustrating ADCs to catch out, especially if you're a backliner that used pretty much every single one of their mobility skills to try to catch that one out. No, absolutely. Now, one thing that is good is thankfully our Nadine is already full build. Aside from weapon here, before we had to start going, you know, minus 500 credits on the team. Quite brutal. She's going to be forced to go for the Shuranga first instead of the Blood Half Moon. That's the blood transition for the crossbow that you know Nadine's are going to be really wanting to go for. But the benefit of this is that the unique passives for both of those items are the exact same. It's going to be the Extended Fury that every few auto attacks is going to give you bonus attack range on it, as well as deal just a tad bit more damage. Let's be real here. 18 times 3 for the scaling on amp damage is not exactly it's in the world, but it's the additional attack range that's really going to provide a lot more of a safety net, a lot more consistent damage, especially with how aggressive our Nadine has been playing. So, Sharanga upgrade, pretty, pretty good. If we get to see a Blood Half Moon throughout the course of this game, it's going to be even more snatched with the armor penetration. And I think it's the exact same extended fury. I don't know if it's better. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think it is. I think it's the exact same, but I, I think this yeah. is also, we were, I believe at one point talking about Nadine and how she's getting a lot more popularity recently. I think this is one of the reasons is like items like this, like the extended fury now on weapon, whereas that just recently happened here in season five that a lot of weapons got new passive effects that have made them a lot more prominent and a lot more effective and useful whereas like before if you want an effect like this you'd have to grab it from your gpnv on your headpiece and then you wouldn't be able to run star of the wild yeah that is very true gpnvg did take up a lot of slots especially considering the fact that gpnvg was a crit item there are so many good crit items in this game right now outside of helmets that's what i think a lot of adcs were a little bit annoyed by because gpnvg was really popular at the beginning of season four when it was first introduced but people started moving away from it trying to grab other items that gave them a little bit more benefits of course Things like the Rio, we're still using it quite often, but we saw some other ADCs moving away from that item, and we're seeing it here too. The Cowboy Helmet coming up on the line, Extended Fury giving more attack range variety to ADCs, making it easier for them to utilize this kind of bonus safety net, if you really want to call it, throughout fights. Yeah, I mean, that extra range is always good. I mean, who doesn't like having extra hits? And one thing that's really crazy here, I mean, we're on day four with seven teams alive, and actually, I think we're about to get a jump. Yeah, right onto the Abigail as she's just trying to farm safely. We do actually use okay. the monkey wire to get back in and instantly get that kill. And there's the crossbow. Does not hit the wall, though, as that would have stunned the Sua. And it looks like we're going to now just reset here. Oh, wait, does our Nadine go down? No, actually able to react perfectly. There you go. Monkey wire you straight into the building right next to the chapel. It is going to keep the Nadine alive. Sua, nice attempt 
But after she used her initial skills, I mean, she wasn't really getting any of her resets off. I think that they knew about that. It's late into the game, but there are going to be openings where you can catch Suas out like that. Nicely done. She is going to keep her life intact. Also get the kill onto the Sua as well. She is on a roll right now, especially with the Aya just playing so aggressive. Look at that minimap. She actually ends up killing the Jenny who was on the Hyperloop. <laughs> <laughs> that poor Jenny getting just chased down across the entire map. Oh boy. Well, for now, they're still doing really good. The next objective now though, that it is night number four, looking possibly for a wick line, teleporting to the top side. She is moving in a very weird direction, going to the west side when none of that area is open at this moment. There's a couple other teams hanging around this area. Archer range is available. She's going to be making her way up towards gas station a bit too far away for this team though. They're just gonna give up, look for some animals, and that's okay. Yeah, and actually one of the more interesting factors too to sort of talk about is the changes to zones and zones becoming closed off and then turning back on have really affected the gameplay. Like if we can even see here now, there's a lot more commonly these like three deep zones all turning red at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's quite nice for Nadine's, although at the worst time possible, by the way, because now she can't actually utilize some of these zones reopening to get even more stacks because she's capped, which is quite unfortunate for what it is. But here is an example, by the way, of something that you can do with your teammates. The Elena actually bought enough credit or had enough credits for her to buy the, the via blood sample for the Nadine. I'm sure even if this is solo queue, right, they were organizing something like this way before. Maybe it was the Elena that brought it up. Maybe it was the Nadine that brought it up at the beginning of the game too but these are things that you can coordinate with your team just ask them hey can i can you call me a blood sample later on into the game if you're having a good game then it's a really really solid strategy now they're gonna have the bonus armor penetration and look at that health bar on the 11 just get chunked down like no tomorrow Vianne trying to jump in she is gonna pressurize the io a little bit but perfect monkey wire usage blink away as well this 11 is maybe pulling a little bit too far white lily will get the nadine away but you can see the amount of damage difference with this blood half move she was chunking that 11 through the calorie cyclone that is the power of blood weapons on this character yeah and i mean a great reaction times coming from nadine as well i mean the preemptive blink knowing on air was coming to make sure that they were safely out not waiting until the last second uh, also same with like the usage of this monkey wire nadine is almost instantly being able to place down that anchor and just send herself away to just build up that space to make sure she's not being run down by these deadly targets the other thing I really wanted to talk about with the Nadine too that you were mentioning with the buying of the blood, I guarantee it feels like the Nadine here was like, Elena, buy me this and I'll buy you. Because definitely yeah. feels like a, a Nadine kind of call there where they wanted that shiny blood weapon. Exactly. You always have to give and take, right? When it comes to Elena, for example, she's not going to be using the blood sample that much. She was probably playing the right idea. I mean, you're not always gonna see this in your game specifically because you, maybe, you know, they're like, hey, I don't know this Nadine player. I don't know if I can trust them with 500 credits. But when it comes to some of these best players in the world kind of situations, yeah, you can make that call 100% and your players should theoretically be able to make the right call of giving you some of those transitions. We already saw the effect of it and we might see another one as this fight might begin too. Yeah, here comes the fight. Oh, the, the Aya kind of just walking straight out showing, but it doesn't matter. The Darko dies instantly. Beautiful blink away from the Darko as well, looking for an angle, putting herself away from the enemy, but in between, uh, but putting the Elena in between as well. Dance Macabre, her ultimate was just not even utilized, but it's a safety net for the Nadine. This is exactly what we're looking for. And I will say, there is one thing that I wanted to mention about this Nadine player that you should be careful about, but it worked in this situation. Using the Wolf Assault extremely early on into a fight, it's actually kind of caused this Nadine player to lose out on some kills here and there, because she uses a lot of the early duration of the Wolf Assault trying to chase somebody down, and it eats up the timer for that one. But in a situation like that, where the Darko was actually forced into the fight, and he was the one that jumped in, well, yeah, you can kind of see the results of that there. Yeah, the other really interesting factor too about Wolf Assault is, is that when you do actually get a kill with it, it does extend the duration. So you definitely want to use it and guarantee that you're hopefully going to get a kill before it ends so that you then can keep having it going and carry continue it over to the next target. Exactly. Repeat and 
Riddance at that point. So good stuff coming in for the Nadine. She has a couple more teams that she is going to have to chunk through now. Gas Station, one of our zones left. Temple is the other one if we're kind of taking a look at the minimap. There's a tiny hint of a yellow quarter peeking out the right yeah. of the minimap <laughs> of that one. So nice things. This is a bit of a difficult zone, I think, for the Nadine to control. But she is right here. Squirrel traps down on the ground. It might not be a trap like the typical ones where it's invisible to the enemy's eyes. But it is control over a zone. A lot of other teams right now inside of the zone actually freely giving the Nadine control, which is always a horrible idea. If you're trying to play into an AD, you do not want to give her control of a zone like this. Yeah, I mean, I think this team has played really, really well at being able to make sure that they had this position. I mean, we saw it. They stayed in alley until the last second, controlling the yellow, trying to stay away from teams and only killing who tried to jump them, and then just moseyed themselves into gas station at the last second, taking the top side so that there was, oh, there was no team that could be behind them at this point unless they ran through red. Yeah, and look at this. Everyone's just having to step through all the traps. There's double guillotine that's gonna lock down the 11. Look at how safely she is playing right now. The monkey wire is still being placed on the ground. Now she's gonna go over towards it. This Abigail has nowhere to run. Perfect placement on that one. It's either she runs back to the rest of her team or she runs towards the monkey wire of the of the Nadine. She's gonna continue the fight. Never in any danger right now throughout the course of this fight as well. You can see a timer for all the other teams in dire straits. One, two, three, and a pop. It is so easy for this player. Nice control with the monkey wires. Nice use of the double guillotine as well to make sure that the 11 isn't able to lock her down with the Fufer Thought, the taunt area. And starting from there, the, the rest of the fight is such easy pickings. Oh, 100%. I mean, she absolutely just knows how to play her spacing and who her targets are. Because like you mentioned, I mean, the 11 couldn't catch her. We could see the Abigail absolutely wanted her and she just kept her out of her range for as long as she could. I mean, so Abigail had to raw E, and then at that point, it was already over. And, I mean, I'm excited to just see how this final fight plays out, because I think this Nadine has just been playing incredibly smooth throughout the entire game with their spacing and their control of, like, making sure priority targets can't get on top of her. Absolutely. This is a very dangerous team to fight, though. Cam Camillo, a Nikki, and a Subame. Three characters that can obliterate this Nikki in almost every, or sorry, this Nadine in almost every single way possible. She's going to have to micro this extremely, extremely well. We'll see how she decides to take the fight. This Elena is going to have to stay away. A lot of pressure at the beginning. This Aya is also going to have to do the exact same thing. Sniper Rifle doing good. Damage over onto the Elena. A beautiful Blink Karcher is coming in from the Aya, actually stays away everybody else when the pure rage uppercut was invested down goes the nikki the subami is just doing nothing and the nikki is just gone subami is just gone beautiful explosion shot to finish out the game too that right there guys is how you play the nadine in such a high pressure situation beautiful beautiful gameplay and guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video we will catch you in the next one